Hello out there. I feel like we've been meeting up a lot like this these days and uh, you can see me, I can't see you and I don't like that, but we're going to make the best of it because the AP exam is coming. This thing's getting real. It's right around the corner. The whole point of today's video is to help us review and, and kind of just bring everything together and get a geographical vision of where some of the things that we've been talking about this year are. And so if you haven't already done this, this, uh, this map that you see on the screen and in my hand here is uh, linked in Canvas. Print that out. If you don't have a printer, just do your best to draw a big picture of the world map uh, in your notebook. And get some crayons, some colored pencils, markers, colored pens, whatever you got. And we're going to color code this map. If you don't have the exact same colors I, I'm going to use, don't worry about it. Just make a note, okay? So here we go. Uh, thing number one, gray. Where largest glaciers and land ice coverage are, both in the north and the south. Look at all that ice. Where's that glacier? looks like Alaska, but it's not. It's Greenland, and I know this because I got the picture. Um, and so I'm going to go, this is my gray. I'm just going to shade Greenland in gray. Uh, and of course, Iceland is not, Iceland is green, Greenland is ice. They flip-flop those. Uh, and then we've also got the southern uh, Antarctica down here. And so go ahead and shade those things in the best you can. This is me shading with my finger on the mouse. And, of, and then, of course, we've got the North Pole, uh, but that's not land ice. That's, those are icebergs, and so we want to make a distinction. We've got glaciers in Alaska and scattered around Canada and other parts of the world, but these are the big ones, okay? One done. All right, next one's yellow, the spot with the rare earth minerals. Where are they concentrated? This is from a flip lecture the other day. Uh, when in doubt, South Africa. Uh, and this is a, a map of the country of South Africa, but we're, I'm saying all of the southern part of Africa. But even with South Africa, Africa, look at all these different mines they've got going on there from uh, diamonds and copper and gold and coal and everything. Uh, China's also got a lot too, uh, but we're when, for, for our purposes, think Africa. So I'm going to shade this in yellow, and I'm not really very good at coloring in the lines yet, but I will improve. Um, yeah. If you have a toxin, when in doubt, it's a neurotoxin, and it causes brain damage. If you need a law, when in doubt, Endangered Species Act. It'll almost always work. Uh, Rare earth minerals, South Africa. Okay, black X on three places with the, or the places with the most coal. Look at that coal. Looks to me like it's either, what do you think? Yeah, I think so too, bituminous. Either that or anthracite. Definitely not lignite or peat coal. Where would we find that stuff? Also from the last flip lecture, we've got it down here in Appalachia, in the Appalachian Mountains in the southern United States. Some over here in Wyoming area. Uh, China is the biggest producer of coal. Russia's got a lot of it. Just this whole region over here. India's got a lot of it. We, we just saw uh, South Africa's got coal mines. And Australia. If you remember the fires from earlier this year, those crazy fires, it somehow seems like it was a long time ago. Uh, the Prime Minister of Australia was under a lot of heat because he's a big coal guy. And of course, we are linking those crazy fires to uh, effects of climate change. Uh, and so anyway, there's that one. Uh, now we're going into El Nino. Remember El Nino? Uh, El Nino is when uh, usually what happens down here, well, El Nino, first of all, it was it means Christ. And so it happened, the first El Nino phenomenon was recognized by these Peruvian fishermen uh, right around Christmas time. So they called it El Nino. Usually, where I put this red X is cold water, and it's great for fish. You get upwelling of lots of nutrients. But once El Nino happens, and they don't quite know why, but the trade winds that normally blow that warm water away stop or slow way down, and that warm water kind of drifts back. And now you got warm water, all the fish leaves. Uh, the fish leave. Uh, and then along with that, you've got more uh, moisture in the air, and so you get a lot of storms and flooding, and with that you get disease spreading too uh, in this area here around Ecuador and Peru. And so so that, that's where the warm water is, but usually the warm water is over here, 
So when that warm water doesn't make it there, now this water over by Indonesia is cold. Let's go back to our map here. And so we've got warm water right there. And we got cold water over by El Nino, uh, by Indonesia. What's La Nina? La Nina is like normal circumstances, but even more extreme. And so normally it's cold here with La Nina even colder. Normally it's warm here. It gets even warmer with La Nina. Moving right along. Uh, orange, where it has been uh, historically not very much water. They have lots of energy here, though, and they do desalinization. There's a, a pretty sophisticated looking desalinization plant. And yes, that is in Israel. Uh, and so, and it's not just Israel, it's like all these places over in this Middle East area where you've got lots of energy resources and not very much fresh water, but lots of ocean water. And so they, so they do it. Okay, now we're going into uh, fresh water. And so I'm grabbing blue. You can mark the Amazon River over here. There's a lot of fresh water in that area. I don't know if I did that perfectly, but that area there. Uh, but we're more interested in the lakes too. Where is the deepest lake in the world with the most water, uh, most volume? No, not Lake Tahoe. It's actually Lake Baikal, which is kind of random. It's right there. I already put a mark there. This is like take four. I just ran out of batteries on the computer. Uh, and so I'm doing it again. But so it's right there. Uh, and you know what? For all of you guys that are Miss Penglace's stu uh, students, she has stories about this. She's done some traveling through uh, uh, through Lake Baikal. And, uh, you know, we think of Russia and we have these visions in our mind of what it is. And for me, it's like snowy and Siberia and really... It looks a lot like Tahoe. It's beautiful there. And so we've got to be careful about the, our imaginations. So that's, uh, that's Lake Baikal, which is right there. And then I'm going to point you to one more uh, significant lake, too, or a chain of lakes. Here are the uh, Great Lakes. Uh, and Minnesota's right here, which is where I'm from. Oh, look at that. There is Isle Royale, where all the moose are in the wolf study we did earlier. Um, and if any of you guys have been in this area, uh, just flying from Chicago to Detroit, you go over the Lake Michigan there, it's like you're crossing the ocean. You wouldn't believe how much water it is. On our map, it doesn't look that big, but it's huge. These little, so right there, big water resource for the United States. Lots of invasive species and algae and problems with that, but it is fresh water. Uh, what else we have here? Oh, red, places with lots of desert. Let's think back to the flip lecture we did on, on air circulation. And if you remember, uh, of course, the equator is really warm air. And so that air rises and it forms a Hadley sail. It rises and as it gets away from the surface of the earth, it cools back down and it falls right there in 30 degrees. So it rises up here and then it falls there. And as it falls, it's dry, high pressure air. And so what you have, this is 30 degrees. And what you have around here is desert, bands of desert, almost the whole way through. And it's not perfect. There's other things that affect uh, uh, moisture levels and things like that, mountain ranges and rain shadow effects. But you do see a pretty good pattern here. Down here, same thing in the south. Uh, I personally have crossed this desert right here. It doesn't look like it's very big. It's huge and there's no roads. It took me like four days to cross this thing. It's the Alcama Desert uh, in South America, Chile and Bolivia. Uh, here's South Africa again, Australia. Picture Aborigines out on the walkabout. Australia is mostly desert. Why? Because it's at 30 degrees and that's where the high pressure air is sinking. Okay, and so we're going to go back up here and be careful with your red pen because it can get a little messy. But here we go. Here's a desert there. Uh, and then just desert all across through there. We got desert in here. And uh, should, there's desert, of course, in Africa, this area up here. And then it's got the desert in the South America, desert in South Africa. It's all along that same uh, longitude or latitude, though. Okay. And now using that same picture, uh, where is going to be the, the rainforest? And so for this... Uh, as that air uh, rises at the equator, 
it drops its moisture. As it gets, as it rises, cold air can't hold as much moisture as warm air, and so it forces that water to condense and it falls as rain. And so we're going to use green and just look at where we are: Amazon River, the Congo. So picture all the gorillas in Africa, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, that whole area over there. And so these are our tropical areas of rainforest. So all in here. And of course, we've got temperate rainforests up in like Washington and that, but we're just going to mark these for, for our purposes here, those islands over here in South Asia. Okay, we're doing great. Uh, all right, next one is Ring of Fire and Earthquakes and Volcanoes. And so this is also just from the other day with our mining flip lecture. Uh, and so remember the Ring of Fire, why is it in this area here? It's because there's plate boundaries there. So you get volcanoes and a lot of earthquakes and things like that. And so let's go ahead and mark that in very neatly, neater than I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go like this. This is my Ring of Fire. It's all along there. And it goes across over here, Japan, all these places like that. Ring of Fire. Next one, draw in the youngest mountain range. This is also from the last flip lecture. Uh, so do you know where it is? Where is the longest, most extensive mountain range in the world? Yes, underwater mid-Atlantic Ridge. And it's brand new. That uh, lava is constantly erupting. And remember, as it erupts, it pushes those plates apart. So we get a diverging boundary. And then that, those plates that are moving start bumping into other things where you get converging boundaries. But so we're going to go ahead and draw in uh, that. And I'm just going to use black. This is my mid-Atlantic ridge, youngest, longest mountain range. And then we got just a couple more things to do here, you guys. Uh, I want you to, on the side here, we want to remember our layers of the atmosphere. And so the ones that are most considered, here's where all the action is in the troposphere. That's where the trees are. That's where we are, where the trees are, the TR for tropo, uh, a way to remember it. And then the stratosphere is where the ozone layer is. All these other layers, uh, there's not a whole lot going on up there uh, for anybody's purposes, much less AP purposes, because gravity is not able to hold the atmosphere in there. But the stratosphere is important, and the troposphere is where all the climate change is happening. And so let's draw in the best you can um, those layers here. So I got one for troposphere. Maybe I'll label that. And that's where all that air is circulating, what we were just talking about, making the deserts and stuff. And then we've got our uh, our stratosphere up there. And I don't know if you guys saw on the news, but they're just noticing a, a hole in the ozone up in the northern hemisphere, um, which was kind of a new phenomenon. Uh, the next question here is, where is the ozone layer or the ozone hole in October? It's down here uh, in the southern hemisphere um, over Antarctica. Last one we're going to mark on this because I don't want to run out of time like I did last time. Ran out of time and batteries is the Three Gorges Dam. This is a huge dam. It's in China. Uh, you know, it's clean energy, but tell that to, I wrote some stats down here, tell that to the, all the millions of people that were displaced because of basically their, their valley got flooded. What does it say here? Number of cities and towns, 13 cities, 140 towns, 1,350 villages, all underwater now. But and it just completely, you know, wreaks havoc on the ecosystem, and you get clean power. And so 22,500 uh, megawatts, how many gigawatts is that? You'd be right, 22.5 gigawatts. Know your conversions. Um, but yeah, so the, uh, on China, let's mark that in. You want to know that, uh, that it, you just label it. It's like right there right in that area. So China, not only do they have coal, not only do they have the biggest dam, they also have a ton of solar panels and they're working on nuclear power too. Why? Because they've got so many people, they need the energy. Okay, well, we made a mess of that map, but uh, I want you to know where those places are. I hope that was helpful for you and we came in with 20 seconds to spare. You guys take care, keep studying uh, modules in Canvas, hit those Quizlets, okay? All right, see you next time.